for us in the New Testament? Or have I completely confused you? No, I don't think you have. And for those that might be watching on recording, I just started the recording uh, <laughs> one hour into our Bible study. And we are technically after the Bible study, but we're going to talk about justification by faith. And Jerry was talking, Jerry, Jerry was talking a little bit about uh, what it means to be uh, uh, justified and how Abraham was accounted uh, as justified in his faith because of his love for God and, and his actions that uh, demonstrated his love for God. So uh, before we continue the discussion, I want to talk a little bit about the word justification and what that means. Most of us are familiar with Microsoft Word. And when you're doing something in Microsoft Word, at the very top, there's these little boxes, and they're the different ways that you can justify your text. So you can justify it all the way over to one side, you know, uh, so that, that, that uh, all of the uh, uh, text begins on one end and then goes to wherever it has to go down to the next line, or you can justify it to the other side. Uh, or you can do like our Bible does, which is to, um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can justify it. I got to do this backwards. It's hard to do. Uh, justify it so that it's even on both sides. And uh, so basically justification means orientation. It's how we orient ourselves to God. And in order to be justified in God's eyes or oriented correctly in God's eyes, um, Paul is making the argument that there's two ways to do it, one of which doesn't work. If you try to follow the law, what Moses laid down in the Ten Commandments and subsequent ordinances and laws, um, you're doomed to fail because not a one of us is going to keep that law completely. So that's not going to work for us. And the other way of being justified is through our faith in Jesus Christ. And that means it's got nothing to do with our good works. Uh, it's got everything to do with accepting him as God's son. It has everything to do with accepting him as uh, the one who, from the cross, as he was dying, forgave us of our sins uh, so that we could be at one with God. Um, the word atonement, which is a, a theological word for how we can uh, become justified in God's eye. Uh, if you break down atonement and, and shift the word uh, phrasing, it, you can say at one meant or at one with God. Um, and justification does that. Uh, it's uh, it's a mysterious thing. Uh, even John Wesley struggled with this because after he was already a, a priest in the Anglican Church, after he had already started the Methodist movement, he would confide in others that he just truly didn't believe that he was much of a Christian. Uh, and the reason for that was is he tried to good work his way into heaven and realized that in spite of the fact that he was doing some wonderful things, um, he fell short of the mark. And until he heard Martin Luther's uh, explanation of justification by faith and thought about it, uh, he struggled uh, with calling himself a Christian. But once he got his arms around the concept that we don't get into heaven by doing good works, we get into heaven by understanding what God is giving us through his son and believing in that and accepting it and acting upon that, uh, that we are justified in God's eyes. So um, justification by faith means that um, uh, that's, that's how you become a true child of God. It happened with Abraham because Abraham wasn't part of the Mosaic uh, law or, or the Mosaic covenant or anything. Uh, God said, hey, here's a guy that, that really, that he obeys me. So, um, uh, you know, uh, and Paul in Romans is saying, well, that is uh, an explanation as to why uh, uh, God chose Abraham, uh, because he understood that it's faith in God that gets us where we want to go, not what we do. However, and this is a preview of where we're going to go in Romans and in other letters from Paul, 
uh, it does matter what we do with our faith in that if we have faith, we will have fruit. So the fruit of our faith may be good works, but it's not those good works that get us into heaven. It's, it's our faith in Jesus Christ. So that's a little basic introduction. And um, let's talk about that. What does that mean in, in, a, in a modern day Christian society? June's looking at Ron like, oh, you have something to say. I know you do. <laughs> You're muted, Ron. What happened was we have a horrible internet connection here. I dropped out for a few seconds. And then when I came back on, I was automatically muted. Oh, okay. Um, we're here just because other people aren't here. In a normal year, I would not have access to a hall that seats 200 people. Wow. The activities everywhere, but we're here and uh, if, things start happening, we may have to disappear. Yeah. That's just a, a note. It may happen also about four or five times in an hour and a half, the internet has really you know, backed out on us and I miss some of what you're saying, but I get, I could become a libertarian. I am so tired. Most of my life, people say, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to live by the law. Our denomination does it this way. Yours does another. And yeah. if you don't believe the way we do, you're in trouble. I get to place sometimes where I just want to read the red letter Bible. Mm -hmm. All I want to hear from is from my Lord and see his point of view. That makes perfect sense. And I'm going to talk over you if you're still talking because you just froze up and he just dropped out. Now you're coming back. So you just proved your point, Ron, and you're muted again. <laughs> oh, he got muted again. You see where I'm going with this. Yes, definitely. Love versus faith, uh, or love, I call it law versus love. I'm, I'm, I'm like most people, um, you know, we're brought up and if it wasn't from our parents, it might have been from somebody else that, uh, um, you know, uh, if you want to go to heaven, you've got to do this or you've got to be good or, or, or whatever. Um, but uh, that's not what that's not what we're being taught in the Bible. Uh, we're not taught that we have to be good we're taught that we should be good. Uh, and in order to uh, be justified in God's eyes, uh, we have to accept God's gift. So there is an action that has to be done. Uh, sometimes um, United Methodists get a bad name because people say, oh, you believe in universal salvation. And that's not exactly the case. We do believe that salvation and grace is universally extended to everybody in the world, but we also believe that we have to accept that grace in order to receive it. Uh, a gift is not a gift unless it's, it's used. And if we don't use that gift, if we don't accept it in our hearts, um, then we are not justified in God's eyes. Uh, th that is the heart of the theology, whether we want to agree with it or not. Um, but I don't really have an issue with that. Um, because it seems to me God's given us an easier way out than, than, than the law does, uh, which is exactly Paul's point. Anybody else have any thought on salvation? Or Paul in general, he's, he's the master of run-on sentences. Pretty much. 
Um, Ron, you had talked a little bit earlier about righteousness as part of justification. Yes. Um, can you can you say a little bit more about about that? I can don't remember what set it off in the first place, but. Uh, well, uh, Paul writes, the, uh, but now the righteousness of God has been manifest, manifested apart from the law. Uh, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. And I think that's what you were alluding to, that righteousness brings us to faith. Well, the word came up when we were talking about following Christ in baptism. That's true. Fulfilling righteousness. Um, it's there in Job, too, because, well, we know the end of the story from the beginning. He was a righteous man, believe it or not. And um, I guess that's part of my complaint. People accuse us, how you say us, of not being fully Christian because we do not see things the way they see things. And they prove text, they have their law to prove what they believe is, is right and living righteously. And I'm thinking, well, says you, maybe so, maybe not. I often do um, retreat from the Old Testament to read the red, let, red, red letter Bible. What did, what did Jesus say? What did he mean? Uh, what did he not say? Sometimes the accusations that we level against each other, Jesus didn't even talk about that. There must be a reason. And so to live righteously, it's so tried to say it. You, you follow the footsteps of Jesus, what the old WW. WD, what would uh, JD, what would Jesus do? And I fall back on that so often. And it's not always what people tell me I should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it kind of goes back to if, if you live by a formula or you live by uh, if, if this, then that, um, that it's always going to work the same way and we're interacting with human beings we're interacting with one another uh under different circumstances different time frames different levels of faith um and what works for one situation may not work in another um if if this if, if you are suffering uh, a death in the family and it's the first experience you have of a close loved one dying it's going to be much different interacting with people than if you know, you're in your 70s or 80s, and you've literally had dozens of close people uh, that you know pass away. Um, so there, there is no formula for loving God, loving others, and loving self. Uh, it comes to us as it is given to us in the time frame it's given and in the circumstances it's given. And we have to find our way. And uh, thank God uh, we have the example of faith because um, if I had to figure it out each time on my own, I don't know that I could do it. Um, and and uh, I've got this light behind me proving that I must be pretty bright. <laughs> give me grace. I'll give you grace. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll take the grace every time because it, it, it beats my ability to reason things out. Um, and does anyone else have any thoughts on, on justification and living by faith and how um, that can help us in interacting with others that, that uh, have yet to uh, come to God in their lives? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, did June say something? Because it was garbled. 
I thought Bruce was going to speak. I saw blue in the corner. Now I see Sherry. Oh, okay. I moved, I moved the mouse around. And oh, it's we, we can we can make Bruce speak just to prove that he's still with us. Are you still <laughs> with us, Bruce? He may be sleeping. Uh, it's been a long day. <laughs> I'm not asleep yet. Okay. <laughs> you you do that on Sunday mornings. <laughs> Only when you're not watching. There you go. <laughs> um, it is 7.53, so we don't need to stay on till 8 just to be staying on till 8. I've kind of exhausted all I was thinking about. Does anybody have any other questions or issues or uh, anything at all um, that we'd like to share before we conclude for this evening i was thinking about the fruits of the spirit somebody was talking about not living by the law you have to do this this or that i like the idea of fruits of the spirit people will see the fruits yes and yeah. that kind of speaks for itself yeah you know who you are who you belong to one oh i can't say it who you belong to definitely i agree with that any other closing thoughts? Well, uh, I already said the concluding prayer at the previous session, but since the people that are going to be watching the recorded part didn't get that, I'm going to say another one. That's okay. okay. Let's go to God in prayer. Most Heavenly Father, thank you for your written word. Thank you for the living word of your son, the word that lives with us even today. Lord, bless us as we continue to read through the Bible in a year and help us to apply it into our modern day lives, not to think uh, ill of someone else or to think better about ourselves or vice versa, but in order for us to better understand that uh, it was necessary for you to come live with us as one of us and to die on that cross, uh, offering us your forgiveness uh, in that dying act. So, Lord, we give thanks to you. We are thankful for your loving act, and we look forward to that day when we can all be uh, with you in, in all your glory uh, in your kingdom. Thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much. God bless. Thank you. Good night. Good night.